Hello, my name is Brandi Hofer, your host of the Color Me Happy podcast. I am so glad you're here. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. If you want more weekly content just like this, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we cannot wait for you to be a part of our community here and you can join our free community on Facebook. It is about empowering your community through your creativity and we want you to be there. Um, we are, I am Brandy. I am a Canadian artist, author, mother and educator, obviously podcaster because <laughs> I'm here chatting with you right now. Um, we talk about on the podcast everything from scaling your business from zero to six figures, um, motherhood, um, lots of women's health, very unfiltered conversations there. Um, we have on some extremely amazing guests. I don't even know how I talk to them really, but they said yes. And we want to talk about just, we want to empower you. We want to talk about those things. We want to empower you to reach out to people who you never thought you'd talk to, ask for opportunities that you'd never thought you'd get because we want you to see your everyday as extraordinary just as we have. We shifted from being like this whole hum kind of um, victim complaining kind of person with terrible money mindset, really bad, hiding like money mindset books under my, like waddling around pregnant, <laughs> hiding my mindset book, uh, money mindset book, being ashamed of wanting money. But the thing about um, that is that if you want to grow, if you want to expand, if you want the life that you live, that's one of the things you need that will help you along your way. And then you'll inspire others to do the same. It'll be a really cool journey. So come along with us and uh, we cannot wait. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram at Brandy Hofer Studios anytime. I'm happy to chat. That's where I sit and I'm so Glad you're here and I cannot wait for you to dive in. So give us a like and subscribe. Hello, welcome to Color Me Happy Podcast. My name is Brandi Hofer. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited for you to dive into this podcast. Uh, Sky Ferguson is here. Um, she is a local, but she is an amazing individual, videographer, photographer, educator, so much more, um, so talented. And uh, she has a lot to say about empowerment and creativity and the fact that we should create no matter what, create for the sake of creating, creating, yeah, that, there's a saying and I'm so close. <laughs> Create, create for creativity's sake or something like that. Someone says, some artist, some artist or whatever. Um, uh, and it is is just like an ongoing conversation. We could have gone on forever. So I know you'll love it too. Um, so yeah, tune into this episode to feel very uplifted and inspired to be totally yourself and go after your creative dreams, your creative goals, no matter what they look like. Um, or if you're not even there yet, if you're not even calling yourself a creative, permission to call yourself a creative. Okay, uh, thank you my friends for being here. I appreciate you so much. Hope you're having the best summer ever. Be sure to join our free sketchbook uh, project and if you've been tuning in on our social media, we've been like mural, mural, mural. Um, and we do have, because we did do a huge mural again. And uh, we talked about it a bit in this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, because I have constant, I have constant, um, yeah, I have constant questions <laughs> from people. Uh, over murals, we have a class and it's $159. I first had it for $300. But last year I decided I just want it more available for creatives um, to afford. And even though it's a giant, like it's complex because murals are a lot to wrap your head around, but not impossible because I've done it. So you can do it too. Um, so check that out if you're interested in, in our education um, and curious about expanding your business with murals. Um, I increased my net revenue by 394% the first year I started doing murals. Um, I know Ashley Cassins, a muralist in Florida, quit her full-time teaching job and does murals full-time. Uh, I'm not telling you to do that because I, if I did that, I would hate doing murals. <laughs> So we talk about that balance a lot in this episode. 
tune in, enjoy. Thanks for being here. Be sure to like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching on. Um, It's just a way of showing, obviously, if you can't um, take one of our classes or anything, it's a way to show support for uh, our community and following us and commenting. Like that's showing just as much love as uh, supporting us anyway um, with money, (laughs) supporting with money. I got so off track. Anyway, I'd appreciate it. I appreciate you for being here all the time, um, being a part of our free Color Me Happy community on Facebook. I love being surrounded by uh, creatives and wonderful people. Um, There is no better, uh, is it vocation? Hmm, Throwing that word out there. Maybe right, it may be wrong. There's no better vocation. Okay, now I'm just, what is the definition of vocation? Vocation means a strong feeling of suitability for a particular career or occupation. Oh my gosh, I hit the nail on the head with vocation. I hope you heard Siri. See, you just gotta throw it out there and see what happens. Um, Okay, (laughs) enjoy. Welcome, Sky Ferguson. Uh, Let's, so your official position would be photographer, videographer, and then you're full-time teaching teaching but what like what is your position called at the school at the school um i would say i'm a photography and videography teacher yeah yeah and but you also run like extra yeah so i yeah i teach in synergy studios at holy rosary um and i run like the skills program at the school so like we kind of go and we compete um locally provincially and nationally against all their kids in which is amazing yeah super awesome yeah so we're going to touch on three topics today chosen by sky uh, which is great so why is access to creating and making art so important to kids and youth Mm -hmm. which i run the art academy so at the public school so i feel like at some point we should work together i completely agree yeah after this like that would be so cool i think collaborate collaborating is so important for creatives i do it all the time with everything i do like classes murals yeah absolutely i try to like either pay or empower other creatives um the importance of creating without expectations you don't have to be good at it yes that's. i say like 65 my expectations are low if like you have it like kind of ready yeah you can kind of fix it along the way because we're all capable of figuring things out yeah we're like that's what nature and like that's how humans are like yeah every, like a tree is always growing and and forming new roots and adapting to its yeah. environment yeah right 100%. so we are the same um is pursuing a creative pe- uh, career in film maker photographer artist etc a viable career um, and should it be, this is such a hot topic. Should it only be thought of as a side hustle or hobby? Oh, I like those topics so much. <laughs> and we'll try to hit all of them. Each yep. of them could be a separate podcast, but totally. let's start with, um, not just for youth, but like, why is creativity important for human beings? But like for youth in particular, it's, it's important to get people early, I think. Too. Totally. Yeah. Cause then they kind of. They don't get early. They create unrealistic expectations with themselves that I find that that's why they don't create because they're like, I'm not good at it. It's not perfect. It's not like the people that they hold to like a higher standard, like actual musicians, actual artists, actual photographers. So they think they can't be that because they're not afraid to try something and like fail and have it evolve and kind of grow. Yeah. Failure. Mm -hmm. Like people are really afraid to fail because they think like... For example, if you see me making a mural, and I just talked to an artist this morning who got offered a mural position, and I told her everything I knew and gave her access to our mural course. And, um, like, I just, I told her, these are really, these are hard, and you're probably going to mess up. (laughs) And yeah, but they don't want to mess up. Right, right? Like, they see me, and they think the whole, like, I'm using murals as an example, the whole thing went, like, swimmingly. Yeah. But it so didn't. Like, yeah. even our last mural, um, like, there were so many things that didn't go right. But, yeah. like, I love doing it, and I love what it does for our community. So you have to, like, say to yourself, like, what outweighs what. And yes. I do see it in Art Academy all the time. And 
like humans make mistakes, right? Absolutely. And they're so afraid to do it because they see these ideas of perfection on social media. Yes. And I say it to my kids like all the time that I'm like, you need to fail. Like failing's the best part because that's how you learn. You're like, okay, I won't do that next time. I'll try this. And it like is able to expand and to grow you. And if we don't fail, then we don't learn more and grow more. I even look at like, you're talking about like your murals maybe at the beginning. My photos at the beginning were never perfect. I look back on them and I think about so much that I've learned from every single photo shoot throughout because I was willing to like try something. Maybe at the time, maybe I thought it was great. But now like the when best, I look back, I'm like, at the time oh. you thought it was the best Yeah, idea I was so ever. proud. And then I look back, I'm like, okay, this is evolving. This is yeah. growing. Oh, and that's cool. That's the cool part of being creative because you're like wow you're not mad you're like but that was so bad <laughs> oh yeah and I look and I'm quite humbled I'm like okay gross I but I even like and knowing that you're going to continue that same road like you're going to make mistakes yeah on these things like yeah I made a massive I haven't announced it yet because we don't have a date set in with Sherwin Williams to fix it I made a massive error. Well, it was kind of like a joint error, and I haven't announced it to the public yet. So I guess everyone's hearing it on the Color Me Happy podcast first. Oh, I like this. Um, this some access. So our last mural, and it's so obvious, and it's so dirty. So we yeah. co coated it with a graffiti coat, okay, which is siloxane based, so silicone based. Yeah, they sold it to us knowing what we were doing with yeah. it. So there's like some error on yeah. both sides. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it just keeps collecting dirt. Okay. Yeah. On a brand new mural. Yeah. Like every time I see it, I feel like I'm gonna cry. Do people I have notice cried? it? Oh my gosh, people notice it. Oh, they do. Because oh. you know, yeah. usually with the murals, people are tagging you, taking pictures. Yeah. And like the S um, Saskatchewan Health Authority is like, we're gonna wash it. I was like, just wait, because I do have a solution. Yeah. But like. I'm adapting. I'm figuring yeah. it out. I'm not going to use that same product yeah. again in that way. It's for West Coast and East Coast, like, ocean areas with yeah. lots of moisture. Yeah. Like, it protects from graffiti. <laughs> but other things. Um, so, now, um, Sherwin-Williams is going to work with us and Amazing. pay. And yeah. um, their lab is cooking up something that adheres to that surface, which is pretty cool. That's wicked. Yeah, which is... Yeah, but I don't have a date where they're like coming yet, so I haven't okay. announced the. But that's a massive, obvious public yeah. error. But now with this solution is going to be able to help other people in and the future never, that make me like the bad feelings never go yeah. away with mistakes. Yeah. Like I'm embarrassed that we made the mistake. I am currently embarrassed because people may be like, her murals aren't, like, yeah. you know, gonna last or whatever. Yeah. Actually, someone said that. I was like. It's lasting. It's yeah. good under there. It's a little dirty. <laughs> it's just super dirty. Yeah. And it's also the perfect storm because it's next to traffic, um, a field, and the train tracks. <laughs> so it's super, like, yeah. it's a dust storm. Like, I got um, little weird things in my eyes. Uh, I forgot what they're called. They're from dust. Okay. So it was so dusty in there. Yeah. I, like, developed an eye thing. Yeah. <laughs> It was so, dust, like, you can feel it spinning in the one yeah. corner. So I would wash it, and the dust would just spin around, yeah. and it would be back the same way in two hours. There's so much story to that, though. Like, isn't it still beautiful, even though it's a little bit dirty? It's pretty beautiful. Or is it, <laughs> is it that dirty? But I think people just see the dirt, and yeah. they're curious of why. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. And, but that's, like... I'm sorry, but like as an artist, that's pretty bad. Like that's yeah. just almost as bad and this is embarrassing. And I used to screw up on camera a lot. Yeah. Like a lot, a lot. <laughs> it took at least yeah. two years to like get okay comfortable. Yeah. I don't know why I decided a podcast would be like, this would be better. We won't, we won't mess up. Yeah. Um, it's funny how you make one mistake and that's like, you have a million other amazing things happen and all the positive but like you focus on for the sure. one negative thing and you can't like get past it no until i fix it yeah like i'm obsessively like yeah when are they gonna call me yeah and you're waiting back and you're like, we need this just done especially when people are taking pictures with it and you maybe you take a different route you don't drive by there but it didn't stop me from doing my next mural good good right i just did one at the community gardens yeah it was awesome yeah not great the whole time but pretty darn awesome yeah and like you it mistakes. looks gorgeous yeah and so i can't wait to publicly say i made a mistake and yeah. i'm gonna fix it amazing but i mean that'll help other people too i think owning up is important absolutely and yeah. showing youth as an adult 
like parents out there or teachers or educators or anyone in like that sort of role. Yeah. I think it's important to tell yes. young people that you are not perfect. Oh, hundred, it's hard to admit, but I completely agree because I like, I think sometimes people hold me to like a high standard as like, just like a teacher of the kids. And they're like, Oh, like she's doing amazing. She's doing all these things like that. I'm juggling. Which you are. Yes. But I do make, <laughs> I do make mistakes. Like even just like little things I will never forget. Um, I went to a photo shoot, all was good. And I was like packing my bag and I had like my thing of memory cards and I forgot it on my like desk when I was packing up, got to the shoot, didn't have memory cards, couldn't shoot with it. Was so embarrassed, like Ugh. so, so embarrassed. I like made up for it, like figured out an easy solution. But like I told them, I was like, I would, I will never make that mistake again because I made that mistake and I mm. need to make those mistakes to like, no, I mean, that was really early on, but they need to know that like, I still make mistakes. They will continue. I shot a wedding once on film and the film wasn't turning. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can't take that back. <laughs> no, you can't take that back. We're very lucky. There's a lot of ways that we can fix nowadays. <laughs> very, very lucky. Not with film. Yeah, no, yeah. There's can a little room for error. Can we capture the wedding? <laughs> yeah. Can we just get everyone ready again to do that? That's like my fear. Weddings are scary. That's a lot of pressure. How do my you gosh. deal with that? Um, I take every possible precaution that I could possibly take. And like being prepared. Yeah. I have to kind of accept, like, I have to move away from that of, like, the fear and, like, focus on, like, the now. Like, it's you have every proof that it's going to work. Like, focus on that kind of thing. I mean, these days you have a... Yes, and I can back up on, like, two memory cards. Um, Like, when I get home, I, like, back up on two hard drives. Get some water here. Yeah. (laughs) You're doing great. (laughs) You can back up on, like, two hard drives, all of that, every precaution, but it's still scary. Yeah. Very, very scary. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start with you from the beginning. Um, so obviously you went and got your education degree. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, in high school, I actually loved doing like film. That was kind of like one of my passions. I went to the competition and competed at the same competition I take my kids to. So it's funny. My like mentor, my teacher still teaches here in Lloyd. He just teaches wow. at the public school that I went to. Who is that? Um, Alan Griffith. Oh, I don't think I, I would like accredit him to like everything like that I know to this day and like my passion for that. And you came back here. Yes, I did. That's so cool. Um, super amazing. And it's awesome to like give back and kind of, I, I realized some things that like lacked there. So when I was in high school, I like wanted to go into film, but I was like, this isn't a guarantee. And I just like felt that there was a lot of um, voices kind of saying like, this isn't a guarantee career. Like there's no for sure. And you like, it's hard to be successful. So I went into education. Yeah, I did some digging into that. First of all, we have like, yeah, like unit, the union. Yeah. Thing. I mean, we're just talking about fear and like, yeah. I wouldn't not do it if that was like what you were wanting to do. But yeah. kind of realistically, you're like, you're in Canada. It's few and far between yeah. like the guilds and the things and the totally. like rental equipment. Yeah. And, um, And then I didn't realize, like, and now that's kind of what I, like, want to instill in my kids. That it's, like, if you are passionate about it, you can be successful no matter what. And, like... You just have to move. Yeah. You just have to move. But you can be successful in, like, other different, like, aspects, too. Like, you don't... You can pursue film, but you don't need to, like, maybe necessarily work on, like, the next Oscar-winning film. You can have your own business that you're doing, like, films for weddings, films for people, um, businesses in the community, things like that. It's pretty cool because you can shoot on, like, pretty much... Yeah anything that's what I really like like the way you want it to look and yeah. feel which is yeah like not really it wasn't quite the case like 20 totally. years ago you know? yeah even just like in the last like 10 from when I graduated to like now how much has changed and then and I also really like the access for people that want to create there's so much access to like you can take quite amazing photos on a phone now and so it's awesome for people to have like that they can shoot video they can shoot um, photography on a phone and have their kind of start to see if they they like it and are passionate about it. Yeah. Like that's what we do in art Academy. Like I'm like, bring your phones. Yes. You know? Yeah. And like, you, it's just the rules. Like you just have to learn like the basics of it. And then that's kind of how you grow. And it's like a muscle. You, the more you do it. And I think that's why people are getting so good so quickly mm-hmm. because I mean, I'm sure with art, the more you do it, the better you get. So like same with photos, videos, the more you do it, the better you get. And so they can do it very often now when they have a phone, um, even just like cameras are a lot cheaper nowadays. Yeah. I have one little guy who goes to the lake and does like, um, open, is it open aperture? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like of the sky yeah. and stuff. And or shutter speed. 
Yeah. Yeah. Shutter. Yeah. Yeah. And like he gets shooting stars. It's super cute. Yeah. And he's always every time he sees me, he's like showing me what he's taken pictures I'm so of. Proud and I love that. Yeah. Like That's it's awesome. super cute. And yeah. you know, it like makes me feel like like, and that's the reason we started our program. I was like, I really wanted something like this. Like yeah. a safe space. To totally, totally be yourself. Yeah. Get your freak on. Yeah. Because I was a very lot excited. Of weirdos. That's what I said. I was like, the, the joke is like, if you go into film, you're, you're weird. Like, yeah. you're the weirdo and embrace it. Like, yeah. you are weird and that's the best part about it. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. Like, embrace your quirk. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, and it's it's just, a, yeah, a safe and empowering space. So mm-hmm. I love that we have that in both systems. Yes. Which compete sometimes. Yeah. Unfortunately. You're, you're the, like, lower grades, though, I feel. Like, yeah. I don't know. We've, we don't really have that in our lower grades, but I guess I can't really speak for that because I'm only high school. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a bit different. But, yeah, very, very happy of the program that's kind of, like, evolved since I've started there. Yeah. There's lots of growth in our community. And there's yeah. a place for... Maybe they'll come back, you know, yeah. and use our creativity yeah. and stuff. And you have to think about that in like a really like big way of collaborating and empowering others. Because mm-hmm. like I helped a woman this morning paint a wall in my town and someone asked me the other day, doesn't that bother you? And I was like, it kind of like, if I'm going to be hundred percent honest, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. Well, well yeah, like, absolutely. Because it's like, that's your job. Well, I was going to say, but I'm like, like I can't paint all the walls. That's exactly it. I, we <laughs> cannot do it all. So we need so many the walls. And not only that, but like murals are very exhausting. I only yeah. want a few yeah. in the summer because yeah. it's summer and we only get like three or four months. Oh, exactly. If you want to have a life. And I have children. And also like, yeah, I want to see the world and yeah. experience the things. Mm-hmm. So like. Like that is enough for me yeah. and I'm willing to share and encourage and empower others yeah. because that's how our community gets better. Oh, 100%. And so if we share that with our students and we share that with our youth, that mindset, like our community can get better or they can go off and make another community better Absolutely. or empower other creatives yeah. with that same, that same thinking. And it's so exhausting. Are you exhausted? Like by the fact, like some people... I just have these conversations and I don't really engage in them with people who are like, well, that person wouldn't do that same for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever get that? Yes. Well, I, and I hate when people like to talk to me about like comparison of like other, let's say like even just like photographers that I'm like, it's not about oh, that. Like hard. we're, we're all different in, and that's what makes us awesome about it. Um, there's tons of photographers. Oh, I, it's, right? I mean, amazing. And I want there to be tons of photographers and I hate when, yeah, people come to me to speak about that. I just try to change the yeah. conversation and the narrative. Wrote it's, it. Yeah, it's not about like, that. Well, yeah, your your literally the really classic high. high. Yeah. Or, yeah. like, it's pretty great. Yeah. Like, if you just think about it that way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to, to reframe your mindset. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good trick. It's so... Because it's not about comparing <sighs> or competing. It's, like, about creating the community yeah. within it. And that's why I kind of, like, I personally make the choice of, like, steering away from Paul politics yeah etc yeah and yeah anyway we won't get into politics because that's what i want to i want to bring up your next topic um you don't have to be the importance it's importance of creating without expectations you don't have to be good at it this was the reason i want to talk about this was this is something that i really struggled with even in like high school too so like when i went to compete in this competition i got silver and i didn't get gold my world felt like it had ended because it was like, I wasn't perfect. You placed. Though. Yeah. I, and wow. it's, it's wild that we think that. Um, and so I think the number one thing I want to like instill in my students from like grade eight to 12 is it's like, you don't need to be perfect to create. Like you are allowed to create just for the sake of creating. Um, and I think that's really hard when we do live in a society or education system that we have to like give them grades when it's like, hundred percent doesn't matter and nothing will ever be perfect. So nothing ever is a hundred percent, but like they can't, like I want them to really step away from that mindset of like, you're creating just for yourself. It's like your expression, your voice, things like that. And I know there's obviously constructs that like prevent us from doing that. Like you need to give your clients something that they like, or you need to like follow certain rules on a rubric, things like that. But I think creating just to create is so important. And I think that's why people maybe don't embrace the creative muscle as much because they think it needs to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And there is like beauty in, we said, making the mistakes. Yeah. And, just and, being... and learning from them. Mm-hmm. And when you make the mistake in 
like say a painting, I think, and I personally always say every painting has an ugly stage. Oh, it absolutely. It does. Yeah. And you, ha- and that's why it's so good because your brain has to figure out a solution yeah. physically. Problem solving. Yeah. In this on this canvas Mm -hmm. or on this paper or wherever and so it's like if you're doing that constantly yeah it's such a good thing for your brain to and your will actually make new neurons and pathways while you're creating the mental it's such a like positive nice way of learning yeah right no i agree it's a therapeutic way of learning yeah um I went through a stage of grief and like, and I know so many other creatives around the world and we've had them on the podcast. Like that was like the only thing they could tether onto was like, like showing up every day to create. That's the only, like they couldn't really function. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. Cause it's like a way to express yourself. And in the darkest times people, that is a tether. Like creativity is a tether and like poetry music if you think about anything like literally how you veg every day Mm -hmm. you know okay follow-up question have you ever felt the way like it's so hard to go back so like for something like photos when like they're just like not working they're not the way i want them to be i find it so like it takes everything in me to drag my butt to my computer to like edit them when they're not turning out the way i want does that happen with you like when you're painting and stuff like that oh for sure um everything changes and evolves yeah for sure in a practice um and business for me um but there was a time where my art wasn't where i wanted it to be Mm -hmm. and then i made this decision and it was the best decision i ever made as a creative to show up every day i like at the same time okay i like that a lot yeah so then the nights that I wasn't showing up and I have like a free workbook about it. It's called balancing motherhood and creativity because I had like my first, it was right in the area of, yeah, like just having babies. So like it's impossible to do, Oh, totally. Wash your hair. Yeah. Let alone find time to paint. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like making time. Yeah. So even if you had 15 minutes and I know a mom who just had her third baby and her, um, Jenna Dibel, she was just on the podcast. Yeah. She talks about this every morning with her coffee. Like the, her kids know it's like, this is my coffee. And yeah. she does her sketchbook and yeah. she's like, it's only 15 minutes, but it like makes my whole entire day, totally. week, month, year. And sometimes like, we think if we like, can't show up for an hour, what's the point of showing up for 15 minutes? Yeah. And it makes a huge difference. Oh, it's crazy. It all adds up. I wrote, I wrote a book with only showing up in the windows. So Amazing. I called them like um windows of time yeah in this workbook and and in my book I talk about it but like the nights where say we went and like did friends which didn't happen very often Mm -hmm. (laughs) I would hear like I was listening to Feist a lot yeah I would like want my tea and and like my brain would crave it yeah it's the habit I would start like hearing Feist yeah Okay, so my cool. body and my mind expected us to yeah. show up at this exact yeah. time. Now exactly. I'm in a very different, my kids are more active, want to do things outside the house. Yeah. So I'm literally away from my home a lot. Yeah. And then my jobs are a lot bigger. So that yeah. routine's not the same. Yeah. It's kind of hard when it throws the routine I off would a love bit. for it. To, but honestly, there were... I like, I just made a collection. So now in the collection times I show up more routine. Yeah. But then I get a little burnt out from painting. Yeah. And then I put it away and then I go do murals. Yeah. And I get a little burnt out from murals. It's a pretty cool job. Like I get to kind of like pick and choose my times and it's more seasonal. Unfortunately, my studio has become more of a storage area for mural supplies at the moment. But once winter hits again, yeah, I will clean it up. Hear the music. Yeah. Get into the routine. Yeah. And so that's kind of what changed about my business. But I do show up for the, this is the longest answer in the world, <laughs> but I do show up for my podcast. I do show up for my community. I do like, I do hit those things that like fill my creative cup and yeah. I'm no longer really burning out. Yeah. I, and I'm always that's grateful huge. for this huge burnout stage that I had. I had 130 I made over 130 paintings in one year. So I was creating collections and I was taking custom orders. Yeah. It was going really well. 
Yes, that's a, that's a double-edged sword when it yeah. goes really well that way. Yeah, it was like people like my art. With an artist, you're like, yes. Yeah. And I'm I, sure for photography, oh my, you have to draw some major boundaries. And I'm still struggling with that. Yeah. It's really hard. Okay, yeah. so how do you find that you stay away from burnout? So immediately I increased my prices. Like yeah. after a year of burnout and I didn't yeah. want to paint anymore. I started writing a book. Yeah. So I had a different way of creating... Yeah, and I, I showed up for my book for about a year. Yeah. And then I had to like edit it and all that. And that yeah. took time and it was different. Yeah. <laughs> that, no fun. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, but that filled my creative routine cup because I'm a yeah. very like, if I don't have a creative outlet, I yeah. kind of go insane. Yeah. I would say the same. <laughs> so yeah. like lots of energy. We got to steer it somewhere. Yeah. Put it somewhere. Yeah. Right? Like be active, be creative, yeah. be, have love. Like I try to fit all those things in a day. Um, which you get when you have a good routine. Yeah. But I'm super grateful for that creative burnout because I started my podcast. I started writing. I started doing all these other things so I could choose. Yeah, so I connected with other creatives. Yeah. I have my community to lean on. Yeah. I don't, I no longer have that like massive burnout. I have different sources of income. So I'm nice. no longer dependent yeah. on, um, going down there and painting faces yeah. every night of the week till midnight almost yeah. catching up on custom orders yeah, I and cool. I didn't monetarily succeed in my eyes. Yeah. Like that wasn't enough for the energy that yeah. I was putting out. So how do you create those passive income streams? So a major shift in my business. When that happened, I was like, basically I wiped my business slate clean. Yeah. And I was like this, I never want to do that again. Yeah. And this is the first year of my business is cool. what I, I like so that. this is my financial goal. Mm -hmm. This is how we're going to hit it. Yeah. And it's so far been working. Yeah. It took a while. Like it took, uh, three or four years to really get it like going where I can say no, or I can set Which dates. Which is huge. Yeah. And like. People are like, what's your next project? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> but I've had like seven in inquiries, right? Yeah. So once, you know, that all pans out, then I book my days for next year. Yeah. That is. Which is amazing. That is that. And yeah. then I keep getting the online turning wheel. And then Art Academy is a great, like, income yeah. as well. Oh, absolutely. And I get to, like, play with kids and make art. I think it also, like, helps grow. Like, I become inspired by... I'm so lucky every day by my class because I can be inspired by them to like yeah. learn and grow. And I'm like, I don't know if I would be evolving as quickly or as much as I want if I didn't have access to like all of them. Because yeah, they're teaching you. Oh, every day. Yeah. Every single day. And, and I'm like, if so they're cool. like, how do you do this? And you're like, I don't know. Then I have to figure it out Yeah, with them. And like, I, I think know. that's cool that I'm like, okay. They or they me. show me a new material or medium, mm -hmm. which they are seeing on like TikTok. Yeah. So I don't TikTok um, because I don't make time for that. Yeah. Because it's boring because I have ADHD. So yeah. Like, I cannot. Really? You think it's boring? I, I thought you would like it because it's smaller snippets. No, I just can't sit on a, a phone. Like it drains me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's huge. And I know that mentally. Yeah. Like, yeah, I like Instagram because that's where my community sits. Totally. And, and they fills, fills me. Yeah. And that's where like other women message yeah. me. And yeah. And like, yeah, I just like it. I just not, never got into TikTok because there's garbage on it. And oh, absolutely. like, I know like a lot of people love vegging on there and whatever. Oh, I could do school. It's like, bad. It's, it's bad. It like, yeah, it yeah. like, um, mm -hmm. it like, it makes me feel really anxious. Yeah. No, absolutely. And yeah, don't get it's on TikTok worse. because I'll I'm be there on for hours. There. I, oh, just I have don't a hard time getting off post. It. Yeah. But that's I, I don't browse. I just can't do so it's a great quality. That's a great quality. I, it's an accident. It's not perfect, but uh, it is good. So, yeah. but anyway, they ha they're they constantly learning through uh, seeing others, which yeah. is pretty cool. Maybe they're doing it way too much, but it's inspiring them to like, you know, grab and clay and we find the best clay to use. And they're like, actually Crayola clay is the best. So I'm like, then the whole, I buy enough for the whole academy yeah. and we use the Crayola clay so, instead. Yeah. Right? Like they're teaching us. And I find, so like for my curriculum, I, you would think I could just keep doing the same thing every year, but I don't because they keep coming 
to me with like new ideas, new things. And like, sometimes I'll get different groups that are like way more interested in something else. So I'm like, okay, let's like hone in on this spot. So it's quite cool that every single, I want to say like semester, I shouldn't say semester, every single year is a little bit different based on like what they're liking, what's trendy, what's new. Yeah. Like Uh, say they like were obsessed with time lapses. You would spend time on time lapses. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Different editing techniques that they see and they send me and I think it's amazing to keep learning that way. Yeah. No, we awesome. were unstructured, which is great. That yeah. they're, they literally were like, you can show up every day and do whatever you'd like. Which I think is like so art though. Like I you was, need to. I was so surprised. Yeah. Like I did have to provide a curriculum to totally. begin. Yeah. Like this is what the program would look like and yeah. whatever. And then, or hit curriculum points, I guess. Yeah. And, and it's broad enough. Into, integrated into the programming. But the kids do steer it. Like Absolutely. They're interested in things yeah. and you see them light up. Like we made these weird cardboard things out for like Earth Day. Yeah. And they were so into it. Yeah. It was the biggest, messiest thing of all the time because <laughs> you're literally ripping up cardboard. Yeah. And like glue gunning it. Oh, yeah. So I had to go to the dollar store six times for glue. <laughs> uh, you were like selling the dollar some stores of them out. coated their like animal heads in the glue and I was like, Ah, this is awesome. They're, they're like, like, I love it. Yeah, they're like, I did individual beads to make my whale. And I was like, but that was all the glue we had. <laughs> yeah, it's not so funny. Yeah. I so like, it was good. But like next year, hopefully, like a lot of them will take it again. Yeah. I want to make, so it's uh, Cobra is the school thing. Yeah. So I want to yeah. make a massive Cobra. So sweet. Yeah. Like so, so sweet. So cool. Yeah. And they'll probably remember that forever. Like when they go into high school, they'll be like a 22 foot Cobra. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, okay. So we what grade grades are in the art academy there? Five to eight. Amazing. I want to get fours in. Yeah. But the program's pretty full. So, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good problem. Um, yeah. It is a nice, a nice thing. We're always on the edge of like, is it full? And then like, it's going to fill. Yeah. And then, so um and then we'll have like 11 over and then i'll be like but how do we fit do those say, guys how do you say no you can't uh i can't say yeah no. i I'm i would agree with one that. of those so we like derek and i sat on my deck right there last yeah. year uh my art academy partner and uh we figured out how to fit those 11 kids Amazing. extra kids in which is huge like that could be that could change the trajectory of their life and what they learn yeah i was like there's no way like we're Mm-mm. yeah I'd rather have more and yeah so we made it work yeah so hopefully we'll get the list soon and we'll have to probably sit on the yeah, deck figure it out. okay how can we figure make it these out? people fit but I want to do fours because academy starts at four yeah and they're just so cute and excited yeah and like there is uh, so many grade three parents are like my kid like really wants to be in this now Oh, so. see, and that's, yeah, it's hard to say no to those. Yeah, and and because they do become more self-conscious into grades six, seven, eight. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's obvious changes. Yeah. I am so lucky. Like, I have a double-edged sword. Like, there's not enough of me to go around to teach, like, all the high schools, and I want to teach all the high school, like, right, classes. I know. But if I do that, then I lose my eights and nines, and I think eights and nines are huge because... Like you said, they become more self-conscious, but at you least... You have to have a level of maturity for your program. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But at least I can, like, get them while they're excited. Whereas I find, yeah. like, as they get older, they become a little bit more cool, a little bit more stoic. Whereas, like, I can get their interest and then I can, like, kind of keep it all through grade 12. Yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah. I, I think like it's that. so important. I know. I I have that trouble, too. I'm like, can I teach the next program? And <laughs> I'm just like... Yeah, I know. Can't. Why? We need to clean like, ourselves. How? Yeah. How? Where are you going to fit that in? Yeah. Right? So I think everything evolves in the way it's supposed to when mm-hmm. you're ready yeah. and prepared for it. Yeah. And like Teddy will go into kindergarten, my four year old, yeah. this year. And then I'll start having like a little more, although it'll just fill in the crazy way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, will, you think you're going to have more time, but it's going to be somewhere else. Sometimes when my dad takes my kids, I'm like, I'm just going to eat lunch slowly. Yeah. Because, yeah, I haven't in so long. It takes me, like, an hour to eat yeah. lunch. And, and then you're like, where did my time it? go? Yeah. And, like, it's supposed to be a work day. Um, 
Okay, is pursuing a creative career, example, um, film, maker, photographer, artist, anything, really. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Danielle Kreiser puts it in her um, How to Spot an Artist book. She, like, lists a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And it's so cute. I love that book. Anyways, there's so many creative careers. Um, a viable career or should it be only thought of a side hustle or hobby? Yes. Okay. This was huge because I said like when I was in high school, I was like, oh, I will like never be able to find enough work to like make this successful, which, so I went to university, did education, have no regrets. Like I'd love it. I said I have two amazing jobs and I should probably pick one, but I can't because I love both of them so much. Um, and so once I kind of started doing photography, just like, I didn't realize how big it is that I could actually do it full time now if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, and but it, you have the choice. Yes, I have the choice. And I just think if you're passionate about it, you can be successful in it. And I don't think that should like follow your passion, whatever that is, and don't just like go for the safe route is kind of one of my thoughts. Yeah. Oh, I 100% agree. And, um, but there is also, and uh, Elizabeth Gilbert talks about it in Big Magic. Mm -hmm. And, but she wrote it a long time ago. Yeah. Like, Let's see. What year was Big Magic written or published, I guess? Big Magic was... 2015. So almost a decade ago. Yeah, okay. Where she released it. The world has changed oh, a lot. Massively. Yes, yeah, massively. Then. So like having a viable creative career is very different. But she's, she said that having like when you depend on a uh money for yeah. your, it can kind of it kills the magic part yeah. about it and to be fair her book is called big magic yeah so i uh, yeah and I so she never quit her full-time job until big magic after eat pray love okay which is okay so she was really like this has to be secure, yeah yeah right so i get that point of view and perspective but i think they're like you're a great example of your teaching. Yeah. And it fills your cup in this one way. Yeah. And then you're doing your other projects outside of it that fills your cup in a different way. Absolutely. Yeah. Which I obviously need in like I have eight different cups. Yeah, exactly. And they all fill in yeah. different ways for me. Yeah. And and I just, I need it to be that way, but they're all creative and that's what is important. I'm yeah. not going to be a dental assistant yeah. during the day. Yeah. Not, not saying you can't be a dental assistant and paint. Yeah. And, but I sh like, just because you do that, it shouldn't be defined as your hobby. Yes. It, if you're a yeah. painter and you paint and yeah. you sell your paintings or post them or whatever yeah. you want, it, you're a painter, yeah. you're an artist and you can call yourself one. Yeah. And you shouldn't be afraid to call yourself one, put it on Instagram and have your online your Instagram in my eyes is your online portfolio yep. and call yourself whatever you want. Yep. You declaring yourself yep. is what you are because you'll never become successful in that. If you don't like call yourself that and believe that yourself, right? Cause you, you putting artists believes that you are an artist because yeah. you are so many you people are that. like, I don't know if I should, Yeah, I don't want to share it. I'm just like, just do it. Yeah. And you'll grow. All my jobs, like almost all my jobs come from Instagram. 100%. Not like because I have followers yeah. or because I don't have a certain amount of followers yeah. or whatever. People can see this is what I do. Yeah. This is what it looks like. Yeah. This is what you can expect. Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all it. Does too. That's just like, it's your new resume. Yeah. hundred percent. No one gives a shit about your CV anymore. No. Oh my goodness. No. We're making those like I actually got lucky. I didn't even have to make one when there I got my go. teaching job. So that's insane. Yeah. You're probably younger than me. You are <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, no, I got very lucky that it was just like kind of Facebook of just existed when I got stepped into the, <laughs> but it was so cool. Cause it was open game, open season for Facebook. Yeah. And so if I would post a painting, it would sell. Oh, amazing. It would like get 800 likes and just, wow. Sell. It was just, it was open season. Yeah. Like totally. there was no algorithm. There was yeah. no, yes. Yeah. Algorithm. So it was and hard so to like good. shift from that to like, yeah. Yeah. But I, you do, you shift and evolve. Oh, and, absolutely. And whatever. And, um, that's not the kind of artist I want to be anymore anyways. Yeah. So 
And to be honest, and I'm going to be honest about this, um, I want to make some posts. I just don't know how to like say it or present them yet. But like, I rarely sell art. You rarely sell art? Yes, I rarely okay. sell art. Which I feel I should be honest about. Yeah, because others. I feel like people would look at your Instagram. I mean, I feel like I look at your Instagram. Although now, the more that I see it, I was like, you do have a lot of other things that you do. Income streams. Absolutely. I, I still make over six figures. Yeah. Okay, with your other income streams. Yeah. But you rarely sell art. I rare Anymore. Yeah. Like I said, I did go through a season. I was just going to say from that. Yeah. I did yeah. sell art. Yeah. A hundred, over 130 in one year. Yeah. I didn't like how that felt. Absolutely. So when I sell art now, it's like a nice bonus. And my art, art consultant was like, no. She was like, no. And I was like, but I just burned out so yeah. hard and I hated it. Well, and so it's hard to... I would love to get sell back more it. art. Yeah. Um, but because it's not a, my dependent, it's yeah. many creatives dependent income stream. Like I see and a lot of... Oh, actually, no, sorry. Erase that. I don't see a lot of artists making it as okay. their main income stream. Yeah. I know like five. Yeah, because you have to do so that many. That can to... sell maybe four because she sells art like a lot for high prices. Yeah. But I know that they run an institute. So okay. she's just like making a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. So she, okay, killing yeah. it. Yeah. So she's killing it. Yeah. Hard. But she her family runs it. Her yeah. Husband and partner. Okay. They, they put everything in it. Yeah. Like they have like a giant team. Yeah. And so, but, so she's got a good pie chart going. Yeah. Um, but also successful and she was successful through galleries, got totally burnt out. It's Dimitra Milan, by okay. the way. And she's yeah. on our podcast twice. So it's no secret. Um, and her mom started the Milan Institute, but she got super successful through galleries. So they take 50% of your sales. And she wow. was like selling eight big pieces a month, yeah. like oils. Eight big pieces a month. That's oh like once, yeah, like once yeah. or twice a week. You have to like be creating insane. a lot. Also. Oh, it's in, it was insane. She was like a child prodigy. Absolutely. And that, and when I was in art school, and I don't know if you had any like limiting beliefs sort of things happen to you in school or mm -hmm. training, that, like that was the definition of success. Yeah, and that's why I think creating just to create because we see those definitions of success to be like, we'll never be successful unless we do that. Yeah, and it still sits with me. Yeah. It's hard to say I don't sell art. Yeah. It, it sucks admitting that. I didn't sell one thing for my last, or I did sell one piece. I sold one piece for my last collection. Yeah. That sucks. But the collection before that, I sold one piece at the opening too, and then throughout the year, it yeah. sold. So Which, oh, I think that's so huge whatever. to tell people. Yeah. And I just want to be honest about yeah. it. Yeah. But what defines success for me is supporting my family, hitting my goals. Yeah. And I found something that fills my cup even more. And it is creating for my community and yeah. improving the yeah. community through school and education, through murals. So um, like making the art and packaging it up fills my cup a little but yeah. not as much as those other things yeah i completely so agree. that success a check yeah i feel successful yeah and everyone needs to define success in their own way not on like i think some... that takes time totally totally takes and, time like, failing yeah when i think maybe it's even harder to create so many times so so many times yeah it's hard to create that definition maybe with social media too because it's all they see. They're like, oh, these people are blowing up. These people are getting so many views. They're selling eight pieces a month. Like things like that. That it's hard to kind of reroute your definition Nothing of against my friend who sent me this. Because she wasn't like, she was just like, this is really cool. Yeah. She sent me, so for a decade I like did like mainly just creating with my kids. Because that's a season of life. Like yeah. I, if I wanted to create, I had to include them. They yeah. were around. Um, and it, we had a blast and I would always show that. Yeah. Right. Cause I wanted to empower other mothers still yeah. do. Um, and then she sent me this viral 2.8 million person view, whatever real. Okay. Yeah. She's like, look at this dad creating with his daughter. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that's so great. Super sad though, because like 
obviously I share that I create with my kids yeah. all the time. It's annoying and it's such a fucking double standard yeah. that this one guy spends a little bit of time mm-hmm. with his own child and, too funny. and it's viral. Yeah. yeah, Like it's absolutely like people cannot believe that yeah. this dad let his baby step her feet in his painting. Yeah. Like yeah. Very Ooh. big double standard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, okay. I was like, literally my kids drew over my eyes and nose on yeah. my oil painting and I put it back together. Yeah. Like, that was, I loved watching that. Like the Gus collection was the sweetest. He was four. We had an interactive installation. So yeah. that meant we had like swords and riding cars and suckers tied to helium balloons. Like yeah. Hundreds of balloons in that. Like, those are cool yeah. art openings. Unreal. Right? Yeah. Like, I loved that. So tiring and exhausting. Yeah. The developmental yeah. part for him, too, though, would be huge. Yeah. I'm it just was like, fun. Creating. I feel terrible for Teddy because he's four, but like, it's so chaotic yeah. that to have one on one time with him yeah. is almost impossible. Yeah. It Tap just is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But he's learning in other ways and growing in other ways. Yeah. Sure. No, yeah. he'll always know. And honestly, for some reason, the other two, like it was a very different experience. For Gus, he was very like guided and would, he would take direction and yeah. create with me. Finn, his collection is so cool and it's abstract and has all these cool marks because yeah. he's such a creative and yeah. has his own like, he has his own voice. Yeah. And it showed up in the work. Oh. Yeah. And I love that yeah. collection. Because I was like, how can I make this presentable, right? Yeah. In a cool, funky way that represents him and myself. It's a geometrics collection, so they're like really cool shapes. Yeah. Um, and then Teddy won't take any direction at all. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? You're like same parents, but just completely different. Like he I love just that. wants to do whatever he wants, but like not like in a guided fun way where like it's more like we just like yeah can't collaborate together okay yeah Yeah. so I'm just like I just I'm like whatever man (laughs) yep we tried so he likes actually crafting so I just crafts yeah love that and he goes across the street to Jess's house who he sometimes calls Jeff (laughs) Jeff yeah Jeff he (laughs) called her Jeff for a while uh and (laughs) she has a craft bin that her sons wouldn't do Okay. He'll go sit with Jess yeah. and make crafts. Love that. Won't even do it with me. Okay, wow. Weird, right? Yeah. Like, What's weird. Okay. Interesting. So, not that I say no or like make him do yeah. it in a certain way. It's just... About just a different environment, maybe. He prefers like, oh, whatever. <laughs> You're like, come on. So he didn't get crafts. it. And I've thought about it a lot because all like, I'm like, will he be mad at me? when Because Finn had his own opening collection yeah. and so did Gus. And like... Teddy didn't, I thought about yeah. it and I was like, like sculptural cause he climbs everywhere. Yeah. It would be so cool, but I just don't have the bandwidth and yeah. I have to tell myself yeah. that that's okay. Yeah. He's on a different, different adventure. Crafts he's at Jeff's. He's on a constant, <laughs> crafts at Jeff's house and he's on a constant adventure through life. Yeah. He's just along for the ride. Yeah. Honestly, maybe he'll help me with a mural one day. Actually... Each kid took a day with me at the mural and they... Oh, that's amazing. I was so surprised. Like, they did... They just had a good time on the site. Yeah. It was at a garden. Yeah. Which helped. Yeah. Super awesome. Crazy just weather. Crazy weather. <laughs> but, like, they were at peace. Yeah. So, like, I know that I'll probably be able to take them on these adventures maybe individually. Amazing. Or they go and do something with their dad. Yeah. And, like, one can stay on site with me yeah. at the mural. Help with the mural. Chill out. Oh, amazing. Like, Finn yeah. was sketching on his iPad. Yeah. Did some... Like, it was so neat. So... I hope they know one day that they didn't have a normal child. Yeah. Well, I think that's huge because yeah, I see they get the opportunity to create, and I'm I'm would love to like follow along and see like what are they gonna do in years and what impact did them creating so young have? Yeah, and maybe you'll have three doctors, <laughs> right? They all Never. are super good at math. Yeah, so I yeah. just don't understand. But in art, there's like problem solving. Like I was really good at math, but that's like my favorite thing about art is the problem solving Mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Like I never realized until more recently that there is, that there is problem solving and that's what I love about it. Yeah. It's like those problems and it's like, Oh, how can I fix this? How can I make this better? And there's like problems in it. Yeah. That I like solving. I, it's a language that I cannot understand. (laughs) Fair. Fair. 
I feel like it is. I feel like people who are good at math could maybe be bilingual or like yeah. be like pick up on language easier. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I could be just throwing the right darts brain. out, but uh, right. and hitting nothing. <laughs> but you throw them. Yeah. One are you stick. bilingual? No. <laughs> yeah, I think no math good skill to have if you. But like they could combine that into engineering or architecture yeah. or you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, huge. You know when you're like there is no limit to your imagination, and when you empower people and young people with that in mind. Yes. Like, it, true life does feel limitless, mm-hmm. almost. I think maybe that's why we need to create so young, is because we, that's ingrains the skill that, like, anything is possible. And you have the power of choice. Yeah, anything is possible. Yeah. And maybe that's why creativity is so important. If you choose this path, you're going to fail, but it's a possible path. Yeah. And you will see success in that. Absolutely. Right? And you can fail really anything. For sure. Yeah, you don't yeah. try. Yeah. You can be a shitty doctor. There's <laughs> a lot of yeah. shitty doctors out there. Yeah, like you and you gotta wonder, thing. like, did you wanna, did you wanna be a photographer? <laughs> like that, maybe that is the case. And your parents made you yeah. become you a, doctor, to be a doctor because you're not happy, right? Yeah. Sorry, doctors. Yeah, it was just the example. Yeah, but like, also, there's just crap. There's you know, there's also, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's a thing. We're, we're, oh my gosh, we what almost time? talk for an hour. It's impressive. For yes. Us. It's, well, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it could go I forever could go and ever. a long yeah. time. Because actually, so Sky came and did a photo shoot here. Yeah. I'm super excited yes, to see that. Like, I've been like, waiting. I have some here. Don't you worry. My I've been here. waiting. Um, but we have a lot to, we'll probably talk a long time after this. Uh, where can everyone find you and check you out? Um, you can find me on Instagram. I actually have my teaching account is Miss Fergie 12 M S Fergie. And then on Instagram That's is my, yeah. Uh, SF creations is my photography page. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You do you have a website? Nope. No website. Oh, look at you. Yeah, so you don't, don't even need a website. Mm-hmm. And she's probably also making just as much as I am. Yeah. Right. You never know. Not that monetary means success. Like maybe that doesn't mean the same for some people. For yeah. me, and I'm not afraid to say it anymore. Hitting a, a certain financial point mm-hmm. is part of what I see as successful. Yeah. I because agree. I need it to live and expand my business. Yeah. In and what yeah. I see for it. Yeah. So I would agree with that. Yeah. All right. You need money to live. And I love money empowerment books because they, and I say it all the time on the podcast, they empower your self worth. Mm hmm. They're not, they almost yeah. have nothing to do with money. Yeah. It's all about self-worth and yeah. you deserve it. Yeah. And if you have a good relationship emotionally yeah. with wanting it so you can succeed. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, they all revolve money. around that, which who couldn't use more self-empowerment? Facts. Really? Facts. Yeah. So many. Okay. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. This will come out Friday, which Perfect. is. Perfect. Please know that you can always reach out at Brandy Hofer Studios on Instagram anytime and be sure to check us out on YouTube at Brandy Hofer Studios Color Me Happy where we are now pouring a lot of free tips and a lot of fun information and every one of our podcasts on there. We also have our book Color Me Happy, See Your Everyday Ordinary as Extraordinary and our Color Me Happy community on Facebook, which is free to join, where we uplift members and we do member features as well as features our members on our Color Me Happy podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. Please share everything you're working on and feel free to post in our Color Me Happy community any of your process shots or any questions you have for the group. We're happy to answer them in there as well. And we thank you so much for your time today. We sure do appreciate it and have the most beautiful day. Thank you so much for being here. If you're looking for some time for yourself to relax, release and unwind, Oasis has the perfect space for you. They offer yoga and spin classes of all levels. Whether you are a beginner or advanced student, Oasis thrives on accommodating all aspects of the practice. Let their serene environment and gracious staff help you in your journey of peace, healing, and strength. 
sign up online at www.oasishotyogastudio.com or by downloading the Oasis Hot Yoga Studio app. Feel like yourself. You deserve it. Hello, thank you so much for being a longtime listener of, or a new listener of Color Me Happy Podcast. Um, we appreciate you so much. You can reach out anytime. Like I said, um, these are our community partners. So they help us uh, grow as a business and a platform, and they support us. Um, in our community and beyond, and they help us uh, work towards our vision of a better community. Um, and so thank you for serving us and being our partners. We'd like to thank Red Bicycle Communications, uh, Oasis Hot Yoga and Spin Studio, Brixton Shoes, and the Lloydminster Region Health Foundation. Um, they are wonderful partners and they believe in this vision for community as we do. Um, so. Again, forever grateful for you and forever grateful for them. If you'd like to become a partner, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, my email is art at brannyhofer.ca. Thank you once again.